Today on Rappler. Okta Research says majority of Filipinos trust in and approve of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Vice President Sara Duterte. President Marcos says consumers might get lucky by Christmas and see price adjustments on rice. South Korea and Japan rush to send jets as Chinese and Russian warplanes enter its defense zones. Chinese continue to protest strict COVID restrictions in Guangzhou. Singapore decriminalizes gay sex while Japan rules same-sex marriage unconstitutional. Kim Kardashian gets $200,000 monthly child support from Kanye West in a divorce settlement. And Will Smith talks about the time he slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars. A survey by Okta Research says a majority of Filipinos trust in and approve of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Vice President Sara Duterte. 86% of those surveyed trust both Marcos and Duterte. The two also share similar national numbers, 4% distrust and 10% undecided across the Philippines. 78% are satisfied with Marcos's performance while Duterte's performance rating is slightly higher at 80%. The non-commissioned polls were done with 1,200 respondents from October 23 to 27. Both Marcos and Duterte's highest trust ratings are in Mindanao, where the Duterte political clan is from. Marcos registered the lowest trust rating in Metro Manila, while Duterte's weakest area was Balance Luzon. Both also register the highest trust ratings among respondents from Class E, while their lowest trust ratings are from Class ABC. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. hopes the Philippines might get lucky by Christmas time and see price adjustments related to his promise of rice selling at 20 pesos per kilo. During his visit to the International Rice Research Institute headquarters in Laguna, Marcos says lowering the price of rice to 20 pesos is really the goal. He says the government is going to widen the scope of Kadiwa, a program that reduces the distribution gap between producers and consumers. Meantime, on the 159th birth anniversary of the father of the Philippine Revolution, Andres Bonifacio, Marcos calls on Filipinos to be dutiful and law-abiding citizens. Bilang mga tagapamana na ang kalayaan kanilang ipinaglaban, tungkulin natin bilang mga Pilipino na panatilihing buhay ang diwa ng kanilang mga layunin at siguruhing mapayapa, malaya at masagana ang ating sambayanan. South Korea's military says it quickly mobilized fighter jets in response to two Chinese and six Russian warplanes entering its air defense zone. Seoul's Joint Chiefs of Staff on Wednesday, November 30 says two Chinese H-6 bombers repeatedly entered and left the Korea Air Defense Identification Zone, or CADIS, off South Korea's southern and northeast coasts starting at around 5.50 a.m. The JCS says it dispatched South Korean Air Force fighter jets to implement tactical measures in preparation for a potential contingency but adds the planes did not violate South Korea's airspace. Moscow and Beijing do not recognize Korea's air defense zone. Japan also scrambles fighter jets after Chinese bombers flew into the Sea of Japan, where they were joined by two Russian drones. China and Russia said their warplanes were conducting regular joint exercises. People in Guangzhou, China, clash with riot police wearing white hazmat suits Tuesday night, November 29. Videos on social media show the police holding shields over their heads, advancing information over what appeared to be torn down lockdown barriers as objects fly at them. Police are later seen escorting a row of people in handcuffs. Guangzhou is a city hard hit in the latest wave of COVID-19 infections. Social media posts say the clashes are caused by a dispute over lockdown curbs. These clashes mark an escalation from protests in Shanghai, Beijing, and other cities, seen as the biggest wave of civil disobedience since President Xi Jinping took power a decade ago. 
Singapore's parliament decriminalizes sex between men but also amends the constitution to prevent court challenges that could lead to the legalization of same-sex marriage. Prime Minister Li Shin Long rules out any changes to the current legal definition of marriage as being between a man and a woman. But the changes leave room for a future parliament to expand the definition of marriage to include same-sex relationships. Meantime, a court says Japan's ban on same-sex marriage is constitutional, but adds that the absence of any legal system for same-sex couples to have families is an infringement of their human rights. Japan is the only G7 nation where same-sex marriage is not permitted. Japan's constitution defines marriage as based on the mutual consent of both sexes. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, now known as Yi, reach a divorce settlement that includes joint custody of their four children and dividing up their real estate assets. Several media outlets report details of their divorce, citing Los Angeles County Superior Court documents. Kim and Yi will reportedly have joint custody of their four children, but Kim will receive $200,000 a month in child support as they will spend most of their time with her. The parents must agree on what school the children will attend and other decisions involving therapy, counseling, or religious activities. They will also split the cost of their children's private security, schooling, and university. The celebrity couple were married in 2014. Kim filed for divorce in 2021, citing irreconcilable differences. Actor Will Smith addresses his slapping incident at this year's Oscars saying, I lost it. Appearing on The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, Smith recalls the incident and says he was going through something that night, but says it does not justify his behavior. Smith marched on stage at the 2022 Oscars and slapped fellow actor Chris Rock after he made a joke about Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, being bald. Jada has alopecia, a condition that causes hair loss. Smith has since publicly apologized to Rock and the Film Academy and was subsequently banned from attending the Academy Awards for 10 years. In a separate interview with Fox 5 Television, Smith says he would completely understand if some are not ready to watch him in a new movie, but hopes his actions don't penalize his team. Smith stars in Emancipation, a film about a man who escaped slavery which is set to come out next month. And that's today's wrap. I'm Ryan Macasero. Thank you for watching. Click the link below for the full story. Follow us on Rappler's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok.